Living organisms don't live forever. If a species is to survive, it has to reproduce. And the first simple animals did that very simply, by straightforwardly dividing. But if a species is to survive, it also has to have the ability to change with the changing environment. And to do that involves reproducing in a rather different way. Evidence of how that happened can also be seen in these very ancient Australian rocks. In 2007, paleontologist Dr. Mary Drozer discovered in these 550 million year old deposits evidence that animals had started to reproduce sexually. The animal concern is called Phunisia. If Drozer's theory is right, this worm-like creature produced offspring by exchanging genetic material with other individuals. This gene swapping, or sex, shuffles the genetic pack, greatly accelerating variation and therefore evolution. Sexual reproduction is absolutely one of the most fundamental steps in the history of life on this planet. It is why we have the diversity that we have. It's the story of the birds and the bees. As far as we know, this is the first evidence of animal sexual reproduction. And we're not catching the animal in the act of it. We're looking at the product of what we conclude was sexual reproduction. This fossil is key to Mary Drozer's argument. The small circles show where the animals were anchored to the ground. You can see that these attachment structures are basically all the same size. They're all about a couple of millimeters in diameter. And you could go to another bed, and all the Phoenicia are half a centimeter in diameter. So the same size are all occurring together. This uniformity of size in a particular place is, Mary Drosa believes, strong evidence that a new way of reproducing had arrived. We link this to sexual reproduction because if you look in modern environments, when you have this kind of size groupings, that is 99.9% .9 of the time a product of sexual reproduction. To understand why, I'm traveling 2,000 miles northeast of Ediacra to the Great Barrier Reef. Here, there are modern creatures that reproduce in the way that Phunisia is thought to have done. They're corals. Corals, like Phunisia, are anchored to the seabed. They feed by filtering food from the water. And the way they breed creates one of nature's greatest annual spectacles. Once a year, there's an important event among the corals. We're not sure how it's coordinated. It probably has something to do with the moon. But it gives us a hint as to how sexual reproduction might have first appeared. exactly the same time, the corals release countless millions of sperm and eggs all at once. The event is precisely timed to maximize the chances of fertilization. Millions of offspring are simultaneously conceived. So, as the coral grows, the individuals that make up the colonies are all of exactly the same age and size. Just like Phunisia. It's unlikely that Phunisia was the first animal to reproduce sexually, but its discovery suggests that many other animals were also reproducing by mixing their genes.
And that might explain how complex animals evolved so quickly. The arrival of sexual reproduction speeded evolution. Here was a mechanism that produced greater genetic variation more quickly. So over many generations, species were able to adapt to their changing environments. 550 million years ago, animal life was on the verge of a major advance. In an environment where animals were becoming more mobile, they would have to adapt fast. Movement requires a lot of energy. Simply absorbing nutrients through the surface of the body, as Dickinsonia did, was much too slow a process. Mobile animals would need to consume huge quantities of food, and they would do that by evolving the very first stomachs, mouths and teeth. This fossil is the embryo of a tiny marine worm called Marcualia. It lived just 20 million years after the animals of Ediacara. Using his 3D model, Donahue is able to see inside it, and there he found evidence of something new. These fossils provide the first clear evidence for a gut within animals. We can clearly see that there's a mouth right at one end, surrounded by rings of teeth that extend inside the mouth, and then there's a gut that, that extends all the way through to an anus at the other end. Internal digestion enabled Marcualia to extract energy from its food in a very efficient way. And the fact that it had teeth suggests that it had a new diet. Other animals. The fact that it's got a rings of teeth arranged around its mouth that it would have averted out, would have ejected out of its mouth to grasp prey items tells us that this thing was a predator. For the first time, there were hunters in the oceans. And that had enormous evolutionary implications. There was about to be an explosion of life that would lay the foundations for modern animals. In another wave of evolution, the animal basic body plan became more and more elaborate. Fearsome predators appeared in the seas, great monsters on the land, and animals became masters of the earth.